Hi everyone. We're going to go over the quorum sensing lab and the concept of quorum sensing in science in this lesson. Quorum sensing is a relatively new field that's been discovered rather recently in science. And basically it's a field of science that says that bacteria can communicate with each other. And by communicating with each other, they can get themselves to do something. And we'll talk about it more. So we're going to talk about bacterial communication, which is in essence what quorum sensing is and then how it causes bacteria to turn different genes on and here in this image we see this really nice fluorescence bacteria will be able to cause that fluorescence by this concept of quorum sensing to give you guys some background the definition of quorum sensing is the ability of bacteria to communicate with each other and by communicating with each other coordinate and expression to affect specific genes, basically turn them on when a high population is, is reached. So it's basically saying that when we have a high amount of bacteria, so a high density of bacteria, quorum sensing can happen, which is when bacteria will communicate with each other and by communicating with each other, they will coordinate expression of genes, meaning they will turn on some genes. And the way they communicate with each other is by releasing signaling molecules. And we call these signaling molecules autoinducers. So I want everyone to know that an autoinducer is a signaling molecule. And what happens is, so you have a lot of bacteria, they release these signaling molecules called autoinducers in their environment. And then autoinducers will go to buy and bind to other cell receptors and they'll turn on the expression of certain genes. So odd examples of signaling molecules or autoinducers, because they mean the same thing, is there are AHLs in gram-negative bacteria. So gram-negative bacteria release a signaling molecule or autoinducer called AHL. And then for gram-positive bacteria, they release oligopeptides. And then these signaling molecules or autoinducers go on to trigger production of various things by turning on genes. So as the bacterial population increases, more bacteria, meaning you get more autoinducers released. And the more autoinducers you get released, the more turning on of certain genes you get. So by turning on genes, I mean that you start getting transcription happening. Remember, transcription is when we start basically converting genes to their to proteins. So trying to go through that process of DNA to mRNA to protein. I don't want to get into transcription and translation right now, but that's the idea behind it. So quorum sensing is when bacteria communicate with each other and they release these signaling molecules called autoinducers and then autoinducers go on and they bind to cell receptors and they cause the cells to do something. Usually a lot of times um, quorum sensing or communication can lead to bacteria forming biofilms. Biofilms are these communities of bacteria that stick to each other. And for bacteria, it's really good. But when we talk about pathogenic bacteria, for us, this is really bad because biofilms are very hard to treat medically with antibiotics. Um, bacteria can also get capsule formation, so they can start forming more capsules to protect themselves through quorum sensing and through so many autoinducers released. You can also get a uh, light, so luminescence. So they can, quorum sensing and bacterial communication can result in so many things for a bacteria that's usually helpful to bacteria. So the first example of quorum sensing was described in a marine bacteria called Alivibrio fischeri. This is a gram-negative bacteria and it lives symbiotically, so it lives together with the Hawaiian bobtail squid. Here's a picture of the Hawaiian bobtail squid. So in this Hawaiian bobtail squid, we have bacteria and they're called Alivibrio fischeri. And so the Hawaiian bobtail squid and this marine bacterium live together. When there's a high concentration of bacteria in this Hawaiian bobtail squid, the bacteria make luciferase enzyme and the luciferase enzyme causes fluorescence. That's why we see fluorescence in the Hawaiian bobtail squid. So basically when you have one bacterium 
or two bacteria, you still get autoinducer released, but not a lot. But then when you have a high population of bacteria, you get a lot of this autoinducer or signaling molecule release. And then the signaling molecule tells these bacteria, specifically Allovibrio fischeri, to start making bioluminescence or making more of the luciferase enzyme. And then you get lighting up of this organism. So that was quorum sensing. So quorum sensing, again, for here, it is not very medically relevant. So here we see a lot of luminescence. But imagine if, if instead of luminescence, these bacteria communicated with each other and said, let's make a toxin and make this person sick, or let's make a biofilm and stick to each other and make this person and um, this person's infection very hard to treat. So with more advancement in the field of quorum sensing, quorum quenching was discovered. And quorum quenching is this idea of inhibiting quorum sensing by interrupting this chemical signaling. So you can inhibit quorum sensing by inactivating or uh, destroying the autoinducers, because if you don't have any more autoinducers, you won't get transcription of genes, or you can uh, mimic the block, re uh, you can mimic the autoinducer, and these chemicals that mimic it will go and block the receptor sites that the signaling molecule or autoinducer would have bound to. An example of this is Colgate toothpaste has an antimicrobial chemical called triclosan, and this is an inhibitor of quorum sensing because what it does is it disrupts AHLs. AHLs are autoinducers in gram-negative bacteria, so if you disrupt the release of AHLs from gram-negative bacteria, you won't form biofilms on teeth. So it's a good antimicrobial chemical, that's why it's in toothpaste. There's a lot of other other quorum quenching substances that are found naturally, such as in garlic, cranberry juice, grapefruit juice. That's why it, uh, old tales and myths from grandparents have some truth to them when they say that garlic is antimicrobial, anti antibacterial. That's where it comes from. Now, there is a lot of potential applications for quorum sensing in the field of medicine because if we can understand how bacteria communicate with each other and really signaling molecules that will go on to turn on various things that can make humans th sick, we can start forming quorum quenching molecules that will disrupt biofilms, they'll stop different virulence factors, they'll inhibit vital bacterial processes. So quorum, the more we understand quorum sensing, the more we can play a role in quorum quenching so that we can stop this, at least in the field of pathogenesis and bacteria that make people sick. So in this lab, what you are going to do is you are going to examine this whole idea of quorum sensing, and you're going to do it in the bacterium called Chromobacterium biolacium. So this bacteria produces a purple pigment called biolacin. That's why it's called Chromobacterium biolacium. And this pigment that it produces, this purple pigment, is used by the bacteria as an antibiotic to kill other bacteria, not itself. Antifungal, it's antiparasitic, and recently it's been discovered that it is tumorcidal, so it can have a big role on killing tumor cells. So for this experiment, what you are going to do is you're going to have an agar plate, and you're going to streak different bacteria on it so we can see if quorum sensing or um, bacteria communicating with each other is happening. So what you are going to do is you are going to work with a normal strain of bacteria, Chromobacterium biolacium, which, which this one does produce an autoinducer, AHL autoinducer, and you are going to work with a mutant version of that bacteria. In science, typically when we say mutant, it means that we deleted something in the bacteria. So the mutant Chromobacterium biolacium cannot make the autoinducer AHL. And then you are also going to streak a third bacterium on their Pseudomonas brunneri, which can produce the autoinducer. So this is what your agar plate was going to look like. In the middle, you are going to streak bacteria that is a mutant, cannot produce an autoinducer, therefore quorum sensing by itself won't work. And then on the sides, you are going to streak two bacteria that 
do form the autoinducer AHL. And the idea is if this bacteria can sense the autoinducers from the other bacteria that were streaked on the sides, it will form a purple pigment because the autoinducers will tell the bacteria start making the genes that make the purple pigment. And so that's how you are supposed to streak it. In the middle is the mutant which cannot make the autoinducer AHL and on the sides are two bacteria that can make it. And so the results had you done it in lab is we look at the mutant should not be able to form any purple pigment, but because on the sides we put two bacteria that form an autoinducer, the mutant can sense the autoinducer and form purple pigment. So we see here a lot of purple, that's because right here we streaked chromobacterium violaceum which forms ahl and it itself will detect the ahl and turn purple the normal strain the mutant strain of it will also detect it and turn purple and then here on this side we streaked another bacterium pseudomonas that does make the autoinducer ahl but it does not, it doesn't cause it to turn purple. It has a different signal in it, but this mutant here on the side did sense it. And by sensing it here, we saw a little bit of purple pigment form. So this is telling us that our mutant can still respond to autoinducers produced from other bacteria. And this is how quorum sensing and communication work in the bacterial world. So what I want you guys to know from this lab is to identify the quorum sensing experiment if you were given this plate. So to know that this plate was uh, demonstrating the quorum sensing experiment. Define quorum sensing and its importance for bacteria. Define autoinducer. Remember, autoinducers are signaling molecules. Give examples. We talked about uh, garlic, uh, cranberry juice, grapefruit juice. What was the autoinducer in this experiment? So go back and uh, listen to what I said. Did the mutant chromobacterium violation produce an, any violation under the influence of AHLs from the two other bacteria? And how is it evident? It did, if we look at it at the plate, and it's evident because we see the purple color forming. And then I want everyone to go back and learn about quorum crunching and what this means. So how we stop quorum sensing and how this could affect medicine in the future.